Oh, hello. I've got a very annoyed Hastings in the chair with me because he was napping and he's like, how dare you? But this is where I set up to film. So he's gonna have to just deal. <gasps> yeah, aren't you sweet? Oh, look at you, you're so sleepy and cute. I'm obsessed with this little boy. Okay, it's my lunch hour and we're gonna do a rest of the year TBR. So I should caveat that I am filming this at the beginning of October. By the time you guys see this, there's a decent chance I will have read some of the books that we're gonna talk about. But this is me surveying what I foresee myself reading for the rest of the year. Oh, do you give up, bud? I'm sorry, I feel bad. Looking at what I'm planning on reading for the rest of the year and giving you guys a sneak peek. So I have some things that are pretty definite because they are related to buddy reads or challenges or whatever. Other things are more, you know, we'll see if I get to it or not kind of a deal. But without further ado, let's get into it. So buddy read wise, I will definitely read the Hacienda because this is the Blaze and Bodice Ripper book club pick for October. So it's horror. Very appropriate time of year to read that. I am planning on doing a buddy read over on TikTok of Dick Fight Island by Ryben Ike. So look forward to that. This is a, a manga that I'm excited to get into. And then Leanna and I have a buddy read going. You guys know for a long time of Realm of the Elderlings, and we're going to be finishing the fourth sub series within the Realm of the Elderlings overall series this year, which is the Rainwild Chronicles. So we have Dragon's Haven in October, City of Dragons in November, and Blood of Dragons in December. So buddy read wise, that is what I've got going right now. Then there are two readathons that I I'm planning on participating in and I have been building my TBRs for those. So first is I'm going to do two weeks of Black a Weenathon. Black a Weenathon goes from October 1st to October 31st. I will try to remember to link to Bree's announcement video. I'm going to do probably two weeks worth of that. So I'm going to do an Attica Lock reading project where this is like a new video format I'm going to try with this, which is looking at an author that I have not read anything from yet, but think that I'm going to really love and trying three books from them. So I've picked her to do that with first. So I will be reading Blackwater Rising, The Cutting Season, and Bluebird Bluebird from Attica Loft for Black a Weenathon. Technically you can read any genre in Black a Weenathon, but I feel like it's Halloween. So like I'm trying to read mystery thriller horror kind of things. So that is on my TBR. And then I've pulled five other books and I'm not totally decided what amongst these I will read for my other week of Black a Weenathon. On. But I've got When the Reckoning Comes by Latanya McQueen, which is a horror novel set, I believe, at a plantation. And it got some good buzz last year. So it's pretty short. So I think that might be a good thing to mix in. These Toxic Things by Rachel Housel Hall. I'm thinking about this for my sort of like underrated pick for the prompts. And this is a thriller with somebody who is going through an estate sale and like find something that they're not supposed to find. So that is something I'm thinking about. The Parable of the Sower, I have on my five star predictions list. So I definitely want to read that anyway this year. But I think I might read it for Black a Weenathon because this is like, I believe dystopian. So sort of a different flavor of kind of horror adjacent, something that is meant to be like a horrifying scenario. I thought that this could be kind of a good option for that. And this would satisfy a book written in like backlist slash written in the 20th century, because I think this came out in the 70s originally, or 1993. Either way, pretty close, right? <laughs> so but it did come out in the 20th century and it's a backlist title. So I thought this could be a good option. Akata Woman, I thought for like witchiness, well, I've got two witch picks that we could go with. Akata Woman by Nettie Akorfor. This is the third book in a YA fantasy. Well, the first book was middle grade. The second book was YA. I think that this is adult, which I think is kind of a cool thing, but it's a series and I've been reading the series so I could choose to catch up with it. Or I didn't realize that Alexis Henderson was black, but she was on a suggested TBR from last year and I was was like, ooh, I've had this on my TBR. So this might be a good opportunity to read that. So I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be mad if I read all eight of those books over two weeks, which is a pretty doable scenario. So anyway, ugh. This is my Black Aweenathon TBR. Oh my gosh, I am not handling these books well. So um, that's Black Aweenathon. And then the other thing that I'm going to do readathon wise is I'm going to do Week a we Weekend Aweenathon, which I've never done one of those before, but I just felt like this was the year. So I believe the two hosts for this, I know Olivia reads a latte, so Liv and then Gabby from Gabby Reads. Those are two of the hosts. I'm not sure if there's another one, but I'll link, I'll link to one of their announcement videos. They 
had some prompts. I'm trying to remember. Okay, yeah. So they had read a book with a monster on the cover and they had read a horror graphic novel or a mystery graphic novel or monster graphic novel. So I'm going with monstrous for both of those. So I have two bind ups of monstrous I need to read. So I'm going to read both of those during that weekend. And then I guess one of the prompts is to read a book in the dark so I can do that. And then I forget. Oh yeah, then I think the other prompt is let a flip a coin to pick your TBR. So I can do that between a few books. But there are a bunch of books that I've pulled as possible things to read that weekend. And I think I'm going to kind of mood read, but I'll just run through these real quick. So first of all, there's a few of them that I pulled because I thought that they were kind of just like reasonably short and therefore might be good options. So The Island by C.L. Taylor is a YA isolated close circle mystery book. So kind of like a mystery pick. The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher is a pretty short horror slash fantasy type novel, which is I think kind of like portal fantasy or portal horror, but it's it's pretty short. So that might be a good option. I specifically picked up Twin Spirits by W.W. W. Jacobs, which is the complete weird stories of W.W. W. Jacobs, who wrote The Monkey's Paw. I would like to try some more stories from him. And this is sort of a classic pick. So I thought that might be fun. So I think this might be a good choice for some time in October, maybe for Weekend Ween. We'll see. McGlue by Atessa Mafi. This is really short and it is a historical literary mystery. But again, something short I thought might be a good choice. Uh, Rizzio by Denise Mina is a historical mystery, I believe set in the court of like James II or something. Oh no, sorry. In the court of Mary Queen of Scots. So I thought that be a good one. I keep meaning to read more of Simone St. James's Backlist, so potentially this will be the time where I finally read The Haunting of Maddie Claire. Haunting? Spookiness? That should be good. Uh, and then another shorter YA pick, These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall. This is an isolation thriller horror kind of vibe, but because it is YA, I think it should be pretty easy to get through. And then the two longer ones, I, this might be the one where I flip a coin and decide which one. The Paul Bears, Bears Club by Paul Tremblay or Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. These are two big like either horror thriller type releases from this late summer slash fall. So I thought this could be a good addition as well. So I have no idea what all we'll read exactly for Weekend Ween, uh, aside from the monstrous bind ups, but those are the ones that are on my radar. Okay, and then before we get to just sort of random ones, and I guess we can also talk about my arcs, but so ones that I have like a specific plan or reason why I wanna get to them. Well, first of all, my goal is by next February to have finished the side trilogy. So that means I need to at least read Thunderhead before the end of the year. I've got two other five star predictions that I want to read. One is Crystal Soldier. The other is The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. This is a sci-fi political thriller kind of series. And this is a meta mystery series. I just realized that the other one is Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope. So those three theoretically I'd like to read before the end of the year so that I can finish that round of five star predictions. Uh, two Nora Roberts new releases from this year that I want to read. Nightwork, I still have not read, which was her standalone thriller released from earlier in the year. And then Desperation and Death by J.D. Robb slash Nora Roberts, which was the latest in death entry. So I'd like to read both of those. And then a few random nonfiction ones. Well, first of all, good God, I finally have to finish Life's Work, A Moral Argument for Choice by Dr. Willie Parker. I keep not doing it because it keeps just being too much, but I need to finish that. And then the ABCs of socialism, keep meaning to get to this, uh, social reproduction theory, remapping class, recentering oppression, edited by Tithi Bhattacharya. So I'd like to get to that. And then capitalism and disability, which is selected writings of Martyr Russell. So a few physical nonfiction picks. I'm sure that I have plenty of audio ones, which is usually how I end up getting to nonfiction these days. So I'm sure I'll get to plenty of those. And then the only other thing that I, you know, have kind of a concrete idea about reading are arcs that I have. Now, I will tell you, as of this filming, 
I have read every one of my 2022 arcs. And at this point, we are in 2023 zone. So, so proud of myself. Love this journey for me. So my 2023 arcs that I currently have that I could read. Well, I will definitely read How to Sell a Haunted House because I think I'm going to read that in October by Grady Hendrix, which is his horror, his next horror release at the beginning of next year. Another horror release is The Spite House by Johnny Compton. A lot of these I don't know a lot about because they're in genres where I try not to know too much. So I think that's another haunted-ish house one. Bright and Deadly Things by Lexi Elliott I have, and that one is an isolated close circle mystery. The Adventures of Amina al Rafi by S.A. Chakraborty. That is a adult high fantasy that's like a on the seas kind of thing. And I didn't realize it was by S.A. Chakraborty at first. I just was drawn in by the cover and the description. So I've not read anything from her before, but this will be my first. What Have We Done is the newest thriller from Alex Finley that's coming out in the fall. Or not the fall, sorry, the winter. The Mimicking of Known Successes by Malka and Older. That is a, uh, I think it's a queer mystery that my friend Jocelyn, who now works for Tor, recommended to me. She said she thought I would like that one. So I went ahead and got an arc of that. Lone Woman by Victor Laval is a horror, like a Western horror that comes out next year. The next horror novel from T. Kingfisher is called A House with Good Bones. I have that one. And then Sisters of the Lost Nation by Nick Medina is about First Nations girls who are going missing, I believe. It's a debut and I was intrigued when I was reading the description. So any or all of those are books I could also read. So yeah, I think that that will do it for my TBR. I'm sure I will read half of these and not the other half. And who knows what I will actually end up reading. But those are the things that are on my radar that I would like to finish before the end of the year. So let me know what you've got on your TBR for the rest of the year and what you think about any of the books we talked about. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me. And my battery just died. So... <laughs> We'll finish it from here. Uh, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye! Say bye Hastings. Say mama kicked me right out of my sleeping spot. I'm so sorry buddy. I'm so sorry. You're such a good boy.